we've already looked at document errors in this module and how they affect the process. Now we want to see how to handle errors within our process. Error handling is important because despite our best efforts to avoid errors in our processes, they will happen and they are common. At the same time, we want to ensure that our processes are running properly. So errors are disruptive and can cause business to slow down or even to stop for a period. But if we can handle errors properly, then we can reduce these delays. So effective error handling will help you to quickly resolve problems and get your processes working again. So handling errors properly and ensuring successful recovery is a sure sign of a robust integration architecture. And more than just capturing errors, communicating the status and the details of your integrations will keep confidence in your work high and ensures that the right people are focused on the right problems and solutions. So communicating the right information to the right people is important. And there are different types of errors and different ways to alert people when those errors occur. And we'll talk about those shortly. This is an example of an error in a process in the process reporting tool. So the red dot with a white line shows that the process had an error. And the error message displays further information for that process. So in this example, there was an error in the Salesforce connection. By clicking on the timestamp of the error, you can drill down to a more detailed view to get a better understanding of the process and the error that was reported. So in this particular case, there was an invalid login. There are three types of errors that we need to consider when we look at Boomi. So there are process errors, document errors, and atom errors. Process errors are those that halt the process and all the documents immediately. So the scope of this error is the entire process, not simply a set of documents. Nothing else will get processed unless there is a try-catch shape, uh, in which case the process will funnel those documents down the catch path. So after a process error occurs, no other steps are executed and the entire process is halted. All documents fail, and it's very important to note that there is no checkpoint or commit mechanism, so any steps that did successfully execute prior to the error shape are not rolled back. The way that you can address this is to have some sort of external mechanism to do so. So what typically causes these errors? Well, process errors are caused by connectivity errors on your connectors, uh, if you are trying to connect to a database, for example, but you can't because of an invalid login or password, then a process level error occurs. It could be a connector app response. Uh, this is when you can connect to an application, but the application itself chokes and can't return any meaningful response. Process errors can be created in the process itself uh, programmatically with the exception shape. So when the stop single document option is unchecked, uh, this will generate a process level error. By leaving it unchecked, it means that all documents in that process will stop. These errors can happen when scripts fail, or when a component is not fully configured, or when the start shape itself fails or returns nothing. That means that nothing will continue down the process since there are no documents. The next type of error is a document error. These errors halt the errored document and the scope is confined to just that one errored document. Though keep in mind that a single document could itself have multiple logical records within it. So the document is not acted upon anymore unless again there is a try catch shape set up in which case the document will travel down the catch path. And again, the impact is limited to just that one errored document, but importantly, note that there is no rollback for previous steps that may have been executed. So what causes these? Well, document errors are caused uh, by mapping and data errors. So perhaps there is a function failure or a profile mismatch. These type of errors are common in a map and will stop that single document. There could be script errors or data format errors within the data itself. These can also be caused by connector connectivity errors or the connector app responses on a document level. And the exception step can also generate these errors when the stop single document option is checked. 
A lot of these error concepts are based upon the concepts of document flow and what constitutes a document. So just a little review here, when the original document fails, then all documents associated with that same document ID will also fail. An original document consists of all logical records that made up the document in the start shape or the source document. So batching and splits can impact the scope of document error failures. And we saw how the try-catch shape also changes the impact of document errors by resetting the document IDs. So only the document that fails will stop processing while other documents can continue. The third type of error is an atom error. And this is a runtime error in which uh, all processing halts at the inception of the error. And these errors are not recoverable or caught in the process. Although you can, uh, detect them and handle them by using some certain runtime techniques. So when an atom fails, they effectively cause a process level error because all document processing is halted and a failure event is reported once the atom comes back online. During a process execution, any activities at the atom operational level which fail, irrespective of the design of the process, would be considered an atom error and are generally caused by a lack of atom resources. So examples of this type of error would include that the JVM runs out of heap space, perhaps the atom itself is out of memory on the machine where it resides or is out of writable disk space. It can also happen whenever the server is disconnected and so that could be for an intentional restart or perhaps unintentionally if connectivity is lost. Errors can be categorized. There are some errors that you can recover from and others that you cannot. So recoverable errors are errors which can be trapped and which do not prevent further processing. So these are typically design level errors. The try-catch shape allows you to trap these errors and continue processing. The vast majority of errors in Boomi processes are recoverable. Unrecoverable errors cannot be handled through Boomi. Uh, these are usually associated with atom issues. So even the try-catch shape will not catch an error if your server goes down. So errors have some common characteristics that we want to touch on. All errors are written to a process log. Unrecoverable errors are written to the process log after the runtime is brought back up. But just to point out that all of these are captured. Errors are flagged with a red dot in the process reporting view and can display an error message. They will create an event in the account event log and may send alert emails to any subscribed users so long as those alerts are set up. Errors cause a document or the entire process to stop normal processing. So unless you have designed it, there is no automatic retry or alert or notification. There are techniques, of course, to recover from these errors, but once again, these must be designed and developed into your process. So errors can be handled with the try-catch shape, but those errors do not appear in process logs as errors. It's a significant point because when trying to debug, if you have a try-catch shape, it can actually mask the error that's happening and make it difficult to find. So they are certainly useful, but when debugging, that's an important point to keep in mind.